What? Huh? What? Huh? Huh? Go. What? We're here. No. <sighs> What's up, YouTube? <laughs> Today, we're coming to you with another video. It's a how-to video, and this time, it, we're always excited, but this time, we're super, super, super excited because of what we're installing today. Uh, when you buy a new vehicle, you're always worried about what if, and then if what if happens, how do you prove what if? Is it your fault? Is it somebody else's fault? Well, today, we might have an answer to that question. We can also talk about um, how it's going to cover safety, security, and that kind of thing, as, as long as, uh, aside from the what if. That's right. So what can you have that will give you some peace of mind, safety, security, and answer any questions if you walk outside and see a big scrape on your baby in Walmart parking lot? Here we go. So what are we doing today? Some of y'all have guessed it. It's a dash cam. Which dash cam? We're gonna go over that real quick. So what we've got is we've got the Blackview DR900S two channel. What the two channel is, is it comes with the front camera and a rear camera. Uh, this package comes with everything that you see here on the table on this side. Uh, it's got the power adapter. It's got the cable that will connect the front and the rear camera comes with a uh, trim uh, removal tool. Uh, went for on my pieces of uh, tape away, but you, it's got two extra sets of uh, the double-sided tape. So that way, if you chose to, you could buy a different mount, and if you had all the wiring set up, you could take these cameras and just plug and play and put them in a different vehicle. It comes with eight of these little uh, tabs that you can stick the cables in and zip tie them down and everything and make them look nice and neat. It comes with a micro SD card, 64 gigs, and a micro SD card reader. So that way you can pull the card out and then go throw it in your computer if you wanted to. And then also, of course, the manual. On the other side of the table, we've got the Power Magic Ultra Battery Kit. And what this kit does is it allows this battery right here, and it's kind of heavy. It's I guess it's about 10 inches, uh, 8 to 10 inches uh, long, and it feels like it weighs about 5 pounds. So the mounting location that you're going to want to put it needs to be kind of secure. Um, but what it does is this will charge up off of the vehicle's alternator while you're driving, and then whenever you turn the vehicle off, the camera will run solely off of this so that we do not drain your vehicle battery. It comes with some Velcro for mounting. It comes with some fuse taps. And we'll show you what these are and how to use them here in just a minute. It comes with fuses and it comes with the power plugs to go along with it. And we'll show you how all of this goes in the Colorado starting now. So the first thing that we got to do is we've got to get power for this guy and mount it in a, a specific location. I've already done some legwork and figured out where I'm going to get power and where I'm going to mount it. And we're going to show you that real quick. First thing that we got to do is we've got to get power to the battery. I've already done the leg work and figured out where I'm gonna mount it, and we're gonna mount it inside the glove box, and then how to get power, and we're gonna get power from the fuse box, which is right down here. I literally had to get the manual out to find out where it was at, because typically it's on the driver's side. So to get to the fuse panel, what you do is you just unscrew this little thumb screw here, take that and put it in a safe location so that way you can install it again later. Then this cover, the way it comes off is it's almost like a door. You pull it out this way, and then once it gets there, then you can kind of push this way. And it goes just like that, and then back. And it comes right out. Then we'll take this and put it in a safe location. Now you have direct access to all of your fuses. The next thing we're going to show you is how to get the glove box out. So to get the glove box out, it's pretty simple. You open it up, and then there's this little cable that's right here. Get some light on it. You can see that cable right there. What you do is you just slide it down, and you gotta kind of work it. I'm gonna have to put the light up for a second. You slide it down because it's in a groove. Oh, it helped. There's a, a locking tab that's in the back. You just kind of push it down, and it comes out. Once you get it here, you push it over to the driver's side. And go down. There you go. Well, I went back over this way. Ooh, these are tight. <laughs> Got 
goodness. And then it comes down like that. These little tabs here, you gotta squeeze the box together because they sit right in here. There's no other way to get them out. And for those of you that don't know, if you have an air conditioner that's not working very well, you have a cabin air freshener. And where that's at is behind this right here. So you push these tabs, that door comes off and you have an air, or a, uh, air filter that's for your AC inside the cab. So if you have weak air, air flow coming out your vents, change that guy. Next is you have these little tabs right here. You just push them in like pinch tabs. And then once you do that, you push and the uh, pin comes out. Just like that and the whole glove box comes off. So what we did is we pulled out the manual and went to, it's page 276 in the Colorado manual. And uh, it shows you the fuse box down here. And it also gives you uh, a listing of all of the different fuses that are in here. So I went through and I found um, certain fuses and wanted to test them and everything. And I found out the one that we're going to use is actually, it's a blank or a spare, I'm sorry. Uh, I believe it's F34, which is this guy over here. But I'll show you how I got to that and uh, how we're going to tap into it with the fuse and everything. So the first part that you got to do is you've got to have a test light. Without a test light, this is, is not going to be possible unless you have a multimeter. But most people will have a test light and not a multimeter because these are like $5. Multimeters can be a couple hundred dollars. You take this part here and you just clip it on a grounding bolt or stud or something to where it's bare metal. And what I'm going to use right here is actually the door um, frame or where the, the door uh, hinge is right there. I just clipped it on that bolt. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to look at the fuse panel. And hopefully I can get it set up to where you can see what I'm doing. So on the end of the fuses, there's these little tabs where it's bare metal. If you touch it and the light comes on like that, then that means that you have constant power to the fuse. So we decided that we're going to use this fuse right here. How do we know it's gonna work for this? Because you want it set up in an accessory position, which means that it only has power whenever the vehicle is, the key is turned on on the vehicle. So right here, I'm actually touching the pin and Miss Brandy is going to turn on the key to the run position without starting the vehicle and watch what happens. Light comes on. Okay, Miss Brandy, go ahead and turn off the ignition. See how we lost the light? That means this fuse right here is the one that has power when the key is on. So you're only going to charge the battery when the key is on. And then whenever the key is off, you're not going to have power, which means that the camera is going to run directly off of the battery, which is what we want. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull out this fuse that we determined was going to be our uh, switched fuse. So I'm going to grab just a pair of pliers, come down here and grab it gently and pull it out and toss it in my hand. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the fuse that we just pulled out and we're going to match it up to one of the three uh, fusible links or whatever they're called, the fuse tabs that they sent with us. And right off the bat, you can tell that it is not the same as that big guy. You should be able to see that. So we can set that one off to the side. We can tell that that one is still too big. So we're gonna set it off to the side and it won't plug in here. So we'll get it off to the side. And then the third one is the one that we need, okay? And so the fuse that you pull out of the vehicle is going to go into the slot that's closest to, ooh, it's kind of tight, that's closest to these teeth. So the one that comes out of the vehicle goes in here where the teeth are at. Then, now we know which fuse it is, we go into the bag that they sent us, and, well, dang, it's got a staple in it. And I just stabbed the crap out of my finger. Oh, Ooh, that burns. So watch out for the staple. You find the correct fuse, which is a 20 amp fuse, and then you'll place it in the other slot. Maybe, just like that. Okay, so next, 
we're going to get the crimping pliers and we're going to crimp this end with the wire that came with the kit. So the next thing that you've got to do is you've got to uh, attach this wire to your fuse tap. And there's a bare wire that comes on this kit and it says ACC. What the ACC stands for is accessory. We found that accessory plug down there that's only got power whenever the key is turned on. Keep in mind that this cable is only about eight feet long, so you're gonna have to make sure that it's that close wherever you're gonna mount your fuse to the battery backup. And the way that you do that is you take the fuse tap that we've got right here, you come over here to the bare wire that's already stripped and everything, you insert it into the wire crimp, you take your wire crimp tools, and then you hear all my knuckles popping. You crimp it down. Pull on it just a little bit to make sure that you got a good crimp on it so that way it does not come out. The next thing is, is this guy right here. This is a grounding spot or a grounding wire. We took the glove box out solely for the purpose of getting a ground. And we're gonna go over here to the GoPro here in just a second and show you how to get that ground. Okay, so I told you all a little bit of a fib earlier. I said that we had to take the glove box out to get a grounding spot. Uh, which is true, there is a grounding spot right inside the glove box, glove box area, but whenever I went to uh, check it out just a minute ago, found out that it's way too big for it. So what we're instead going to do, remember that nut that we took off to get the glove box or the uh, fuse panel box cover off of? I had a nut that was laying around that fit it, and so we're going to install the ground onto that. And the reason why it'll work is because it's metal on metal, and I've got a lock washer and a nut, and then everything will work out the same. So we're gonna go ahead and plug up the fuse tap. We're gonna run the wire and hook up the, uh, the ground and show you what that looks like and how to do it. And then uh, we'll come back and put the glove box back on and show you how we're gonna mount the uh, battery. So your fuse and your ground wire come together, they're like this. If you need them separated because your fuse is gonna go one spot and your ground's gonna go to a different spot, it's simple, just pull it like that and then it'll give you the space that you need. So coming down here, we're gonna hook up the fuse back into the same spot that we took out the fuse originally. Hopefully, I didn't knock the GoPro over. And it will go in there. Just like that. And what that does is it enables you to get power for that dash camera, but it does not void your vehicle's warranty. Then we're going to take the ground and we're gonna peel the carpet back just a little bit so that way we can get to the back side of it here. We're gonna install the ground wire just like this. I hope that you can see that. Just like that. And then I'm going to take the lock washer right across it. And then the nut that I had is gonna go right over the top of that. And then we're gonna tighten that down so that it has a good ground. Once we get this tightened down, then we'll route all the wires up through the glove box area and then come back and show you the next step. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and mount the battery inside of the glove box. And what we're gonna do is I've already placed it in here and kind of tested it to see if I would have enough wire clearance, which we will. And the best place that I found to mount it is going to be this where this little uh, hump is. We're going to slide it all the way over to the side and that's going to be the mounted location. So this is honestly the first part that I don't really care for in Blackview set up for the battery pack. I wish there would have been some kind of a channel that would run down the sides that would come with some kind of a mounting bracket um, instead of using Velcro to do this, this setup. Uh, in my opinion, something that weighs three to five pounds, you want to be able to secure in case there's an accident. You don't want to have a projectile flying around because my first thought was I was actually going to mount underneath the seat until I get to thinking of how it's mounted. And since there's no way to secure it down uh, very, very strongly, then uh, I decided that I was going to put it inside the glove box. So the one question I have for you though, okay. is being in an enclosed space like the glove box, is it going to overheat? So it should not, um, but there is a chance of it. And that is one of the things that we're gonna have to talk about uh, when we get this hooked up and plugged in and everything. You can't keep your glove box uh, completely full of a whole bunch of uh, junk to where it cannot breathe. 
but having just a few things in there, it shouldn't bother it at all. But once again, we're gonna have to uh, keep an eye on it just to make sure everything's good. So what I just did is I used alcohol and I wiped down both the back of the, the battery and the uh, glove box. And then I'm going to take the adhesive off of the Velcro and I'm going to place it one on each side of the battery pack. One just like that. I would probably keep them attached. Yeah, you already know. <laughs> and then the other one, just like that. And what I actually did is I put the sticky or the, the soft side over here and the aggressive side over here. And the reason why I do that, it's always been a habit whenever I'm doing stuff like this, is that way if you pull something off, if you're not exactly sure how it goes back on, that's the because it'll only go one way. Then you take the other side of the Velcro and you place it back on, just like that. Press it down good and then you'll remove the sticky backing. My fingers will work just like this. Take it, align it, and then press. So some people may be wondering, why didn't I place it on the bottom side? Well, there's two reasons. One, that's where all your crap goes. And then two, whenever you close the glove box, that way is now facing up. And then, well, actually, there's three reasons. The third reason, the bottom of the, the glow box is actually curved, so the Velcro won't stick um, firmly across it. Okay, so now that we've got this here, we've got our power wire. It's ran up through over the, the glow box. And we've still got a ton of space here, but we're not going to hook it up just yet, because now we're going to go and hook up the camera. But we're going to go ahead and put this in here to get it out of our way. And we're going to close the glove box just like that. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and mount the camera. The first step in mounting the camera is we want to get the best position. Let me get my big butt in here. And what I want you to do whenever you're doing this is you want to make sure whoever the primary driver is is set where they would normally drive. So we're going to go ahead and get Miss Brandy set up the way that she normally would. And while she's doing that, we'll Hang go on. ahead and talk about... Hang on. Four hours later <laughs> Goober. Oh, right here while while she's doing that we're going to go ahead and talk about the camera real quick okay so obviously this is the camera there's a button on top of it to where you can adjust the angle you just press it and then it's kind of got like a gear in there and it locks and once you do that then you get it you know kind of where you want it so since it's a, a circle uh, a cylinder cylindrical uh shape you don't That's have a to big word. It was a big word. I was Aww. kind of proud. I looked it up. Yes. That uh, word of the day calendar is really paying off. It is really paying <laughs> off. <Aww. laughs> so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and kind of rotate it around, get it kind of in the direction that we want it so that we can get the mounting location. And the reason why I wanted Miss Brandy to get where she's going to be driving is because we want to try and get this thing up and far away out of her line of sight as possible. And Chevy... They've done really well on a lot of things, and there's some minor things that I really don't like. And this is one of them. Having this giant box here, if you want to put a dash camera up, is going to make it a pain. And what's inside that box? I'm guessing yeah. you're about to ask. So from best that I can tell from reading and doing a little bit of research, that is where your GPS antenna and some of your satellite radio uh, antennas so are the hidden. So what's little knobby thing? That's why you only have one antenna on the roof instead of two. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and get her set where she needs to be. You want the camera lens in the center of the windshield best as possible. And then you're going to leave the red back on here so that way you don't lose any of the stickiness. And then you're going to find that location. And right here seems to be pretty good. Sitting, Wait a minute. Sitting in a driving position. Can you see anything? Can you see the camera, Miss Brandy? I mean, yeah, but just barely. It doesn't just block barely. my view. So it goes like that and not like, oh, my God, <laughs> I'm so silly. It's going to go just like that. Okay. And we're going to try to tuck it up as far as possible and as I I everything that we can. And but wait a minute. Like that. If that's going right there, am I being annoying? No. No? What's your question? Okay. So if that's going right there mm -hmm. and the p 
power supply is, or, or the, the battery is in the glove box, am I going to have wires? We're going to show you how to do that just in a second. But first, let's get this guy stuck to the windshield. Okay? okay. So the way that you do that, and I kept it, took an alcohol pad, and we're going to clean the windshield really well. And yes, there's going to be some streak marks and everything. It's just going to happen. Uh, but you want to make sure that there's no glue, anything on the windshield. Give it a few seconds to dry. You might want to come a little further over here because. And then carefully. Hey, it's got to dry too. If I can, I give them the, the drying time some time. Carefully. Well, yeah. see, I'm just, I'm allowing the, the windshield to dry. That's what it is. Oh, so you're not struggling. You're just. No, no, this was planned. This was completely planned. Mm -hmm. There we go. I'm starting to get it there. I mean, I, yeah, I think it's dry enough. So I'm going to go ahead and peel this off now. Okay. So now that that's dry, we're going to go ahead and reposition it the same way that we had it before. Try and keep it as level as possible. And then once you get it there, then you press and it'll hold it I feel like in space. Oh, okay. I just felt like you had it up against this. Okay. <laughs> Miss Brandy doesn't believe me. I, 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 I don't believe, I believe in you. Oh, thanks. Okay, so now we're gonna mount the rear camera. And there's one thing that I want to point out. If you look on the back of the camera, there's some wording, okay? You want to mount it to where when you look at the camera from the back, so when it's mounted, the lettering is right side up the correct way. If you mount it the opposite direction to where the wording shows like this, then whenever you put the camera, or whenever you look at the camera, everything's going to be upside down. So make sure that you mount it and it looks like this. Also, keep in mind, anything that you have in the back of the vehicle, and since we have a sliding glass back window, you can't mount it on that window because, well, it slides. And so it's gonna constantly be pulling and everything. Also, if you mount it off to the side over there, then you're gonna mess up uh, the, the cable because it's gonna have to be a lot longer or there won't be enough space for the window to, to, to sit there. So it's got a cap uh, over the lens. You pull the cap off of the lens. The window's already cleaned. And then you want to mount it as high as possible and to the center of the vehicle as possible. And once again, keep it level. Once you get it on there, press firmly for about five seconds. And then you're done. Now we're going to run the wires from front to back and then from the front camera down to the battery. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and connect the two cameras together, the front and the rear camera. And we're going to use this cable. If you look at the cable, it's got two different uh, angles of the, the plugs. So this one has a 90 degree angle and this one is straight on. If you look real closely, uh, they have stamped on the, the plastic SF. I'm not sure what the S stands for, but the F stands for front. And then on this one, it has R stamped on there and that's for rear. And what we're going to do is we're going to start at the front and we're going to work our way to the back and the way that we're going to do this is we're going to unravel some of the wire we're going to go onto the camera and we're going to plug it in to this gold spot and it also is labeled on the side of the camera it says rear that just like that rear? it says rear right there to let you know that's an outlet and then we're going to kind of come up and trace it up to the headliner. Once you get to the headliner, then just you feed it along, putting it up inside of the headliner. And you will do this all the way to the rear of the vehicle. And I left my pry tool, let me grab that real quick. They send you this uh, trim tool, 
and it's for this purpose right here so that way you can kind of feed it up in there and then using this tool it behind the piece and then you will work your way all the way around once you get right here to where the rubber weather stripping is for the door you do the same thing you just kind of pry it down and you'll tuck it up inside the headliner <laughs> alrighty almost dropped the camera <laughs> so what we're gonna do here is I'm getting the evil glare no. But are you really? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so we've got the front camera mounted, the rear camera mounted. The front and rear cameras are tied together through the cable. You can see it's run up here, goes across the headliner, across over here, and to the back. And we'll show that in a little more detail here in a minute, what it looks like. It's the same concept as what we're doing right here. So to do the same thing for the power, which is this guy here, and remember, we put the battery pack in the glove box. So we're just gonna look on the side of the camera. It says DC in, which is direct current in. And we're going to plug it up just like that. And what this does is it'll allow me to get a reference of how much cable I need to have, because this thing's long. It'll probably go from the front bumper to the rear bumper of the truck with no problem. So we're gonna stretch it up just for reference once again. And then we're gonna tuck it inside the headliner. And I'm going to run it all the way across and I'm going to go inside the A-pillar just like this, follow this seam, and then I'm going to come all the way down and I'm going to follow it just like that. And the way that you do that is once you get over here, you peel this rubber seam or rubber seal back and then you can stuff it right inside of there just like that. So real quickly, I'm not going to tuck it and make it look as pretty as possible, but just so that way you get an idea. It's in there. Bada boom. And once you get here, just peel that seal back and then it'll run in here like this. And you don't want to keep it just in the rubber seal because this is where the door closes. It'll eventually pinch it off and break it. So you want to actually tuck it up. Ouch. And behind this plastic panel piece so if you pry it down just a little bit you can you can get a, enough space to get it in there and we'll do that all the way down to the bottom of the glove box and then we're going to come up underneath the glove box and inside the glove box and we'll show you how to hook it up inside of there all right so we're on the last part now we're going to the battery pack and the camera comes from the camera around it goes into the cigarette plug adapter then they have a, an adapter uh, that goes into the battery pack and I really don't care for this I wish there was a different plug uh, to get rid of this so if you're hard wiring it or you're using the battery pack like this they should get rid of this guy here and have just one wire so that way it's not this giant uh, piece of plastic so the bulkiness of it is your problem that's my problem and whenever I plugged it in there I wrapped around a piece of uh, electrical tape just to make sure that it doesn't you know wiggle its way out over time so in here it says dash cam we're going to take that and we're going to plug it up just like that set it there and then we've got our power coming from the fuse that we installed and if you look on here it says dc in that's where we're going to plug it up just like that and then there's a little switch right here to where you can turn off the battery pack to where it does not do any of the charging or anything like that uh, or you switch it over to where it says hardwire which is where we've got it or you can go over to charger I believe is what it says uh, cigarette I'm sorry and which is your cigarette adapter so if you were just going to take it and plug it straight up to your cigarette lighter adapter then you could do it that way so from here we're going to take the camera and it comes out of the the housing uh, it just slides in like this and once again you can adjust the uh, angle of it and then you take it and you slide it back into the enclosure we're going to take our plug for the rear camera plug it up oh, this little plastic guy came off again I'll have to plug it up again and then our power wire goes right inside of there 
And as soon as we did that, we got a blue light that came on on the camera. And according to the manual, you want the camera to be pointed down at a 10 degree angle. Initializing SD card. Oh. So it's telling us that it's initializing the SD card and it's restarting and it told us to not uh, take the power away. don't know how long this is going to take so while it's doing that I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and take these cables black view for your safe driving, black view for your safe driving. Starting, normal recording. starting normal recording I don't know how well you can hear that and now you can see that it is flashing now I'm not real familiar with how the camera works we're gonna to have to play around with that and then we'll show some video of it later on but I know that you can swipe your finger like that and it says audio recording off or starting audio recording starting audio recording so it can record your sound uh, just by doing the swipe of your finger like that so there's a when you do that there's a little it almost looks like the bars on your phone mm -hmm. um, it lights up when you do that okay so that, that's pretty cool I know it's got Wi-Fi um, and there's an app for the battery um, that way we can see the the status of it and I've got the apps installed but I have no idea how all that stuff works just yet um, so I'm gonna play around with it and then we'll do another video a follow-up to see how it goes um, but another thing that we need to do real quick is go ahead and put the key in the ignition and turn it on to the on position and as soon as you did that we've got a flashing red light and that flashing red light lets us know that uh, the battery is being charged, the, the power pack is being charged. It's still open a little bit. There we go. And uh, eventually it should go to uh, a solid green, um, and that's once the battery is, is fully charged. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and take all these cables, and I'm going to kind of fold them up. And once I fold them up, I'm going to zip tie them together. Uh, once I get them zip tied together, then I'm going to stuff them inside the dash uh, so that way everything's out of sight, out of mind. And as soon as we get that done, we'll come back to you and show you the final uh, uh, look of how everything looks completely installed. And uh, so far, super excited. We'll show you something here in a little bit. What you think, Mama? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, guys, so that's it. It's in. Everything looks crisp and clean. You wouldn't even know there are wires all over the place, which is pretty darn important to me so this guy did a great job um overall the time it took a lot longer than i thought it would as far as installation but we're moving cameras and all this other kind of stuff and setting up so um somebody that's experienced with installation how long do you think it would have taken without the cameras without doing everything i could probably do it in about 20 minutes maybe 25 minutes by myself me if i were doing it by myself without cameras i probably would have taken longer than it took with the cameras. I, it's just, it's very time consuming and meticulous. But other than that, I'm excited to see what it looks like. Um, we chose this camera, this model for specific reasons, the quality of the video, quality of the sound, um, because of the impact um, detection, all that good stuff. I am curious to see though, because we have that ultra, ultra, ultra dark ceramic um, tent back there. I'm kind of <laughs> curious to see what the quality looks like on that rear camera. I am too, and going off of that, we live out in the middle of nowhere, we don't have the city lights, we don't have a lot of that, and a lot of the reviews show everything from being on in-city and everything, so I'm curious to see how that's going to hold up. Um, I'm, I'm excited about everything, but since we're so new to the cameras and everything, we, we can't show you any of the video just yet. That's going to come in a, another video in just a couple of weeks, uh, give us some time to actually record, uh, figure out the apps, and do all of that stuff and get everything set up. And uh, once we get that, we will have a video showing how awesome this thing really is. Because going off of the specs, it is the number one dash camera out on the market as of today. And the second thing that makes them the number one is that daggum battery backup. <laughs> uh, because you're not using the vehicle's power at all, except for when you're driving. You're going to charge the battery, and then it's going to run off of that. So the parking mode is number one. Yeah, so I'm really curious to see how well the diode dynamic lighting upgrades um, affect the quality of the video. But like he said, stay tuned. We're going to do a follow-up. Um, hit us, hit, hit like, 
share, um, comment, Subscribe. all that good stuff. <laughs> Let us know what you like, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>